another anatomy and physiology discussion ang alay ko sa inyo because for today we're gonna have respiratory system if you wanna know more about that stay tuned Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Nia Gabe and I'm a registered nurse and I do have a degree in medical surgical nursing. I create nursing educational content to help nursing students with their studies. If that's something that you are interested in, consider subscribing. If you're already a subscriber though, thank you so much for your love and support. I see you. I upload my videos two to three times in a week. Don't miss that out. Subscribe now. Hit the notification bell so that you will be the very first to watch my newest uploads. Also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends because that would really help me know that you like to see more content like this. Without further ado, let's jump into the video. Hi nurses, for today we are going to discuss about your respiratory system. I'll give you the easiest way for you to remember, you know, the functions, the anatomy, and the physiology of your respiratory system. In order for me to do that, I will need to switch back to my PC and I'll see you guys in a bit. Alright, hi everybody. Welcome nga sa ating formal discussion ng yung respiratory system, anatomy, and physiology. Nako, namiss ko po ito. If you haven't watched the other anatomy and physiology discussion we did, I'll be putting it on the description box. You make sure that you check that out because you're gonna have a lot of fun and please watch out for more anafee discussion dito sa ating channel okay let me give to you our objectives for today we're gonna have functions of the respiratory system anatomy of the respiratory system and also physiology of the respiratory system mm -mm. usapang hininga nga ito mga kabagang ready ka na let's do this all right, so what is the functions of the respiratory system? Okay, isa isahin natin to ha. First, oxygen supplier. The job of the respiratory system is to keep the body constantly supplied with O2. Yes, oxygen. Very important yan para sa pag-function ng ating mga cells. Next, elimination. Ano nga ine-eliminate? Carbon dioxide. During what? Exhalation. Alright. Gas exchange. The respiratory system organs oversee the gas exchange that occur between the blood and the external environment. What else? Passageway. Passageways that allow air to reach the lungs. Humidifier. Mm -hmm. Humidifier, hindi yung nakikita mo sa mall or sa mga bahay ng friend mo. It purifies humidify and warm incoming air. Next, okay, let's discuss the anatomy of the respiratory system. Ang ginawa ko dito ay dinivide ko siya sa dalawa. Kasi nga, the organs of the respiratory system from a continuous system of passages called the respiratory tract. It has two major divisions, ang yung upper respiratory tract and the lower respiratory tract. Alright, so para mas maging madali sa'yo, ito po siya ha. I'm not gonna go all through these guys. If you want, you can take a screenshot. But here is your upper respiratory tract. Now, these consist of the following. Your nasal cavity, soft palate, hard palate, nostrils, oral cavity, tongue, trachea, paranasal sinuses, pharynx, larynx, and your vocal cords. Once again, this is your upper respiratory tract. Lahat ng mga nasa taas. Pasok tayo ng medyo deeper. Dito tayo sa lower respiratory tract. Track. Ano ano to? Nandiyan ang larynx, trachea, right primary bronchi, right lung, ribs, intercoastal muscles, trachea cartilage, left prime, left primary bronchi, left lung, bronchioles, bronchioles, alveolar suck, alveoli at ang inyong diaphragm. Mm -hmm. Which is the major muscle for? Ano ang yung diaphragm? Major muscle for respiration. Okay, next, physiology of the respiratory system. Here, we're gonna discuss about respiration, mechanics of breathing, respiratory volumes and capacities, respiratory sounds, external expiration, gas transport, and internal respiration, control of respiration. Wag ka mag-alala kasi mukhang mouthful lang yan, pero this discussion will cover all the physiology of your respiratory system, alright? So, handa ka na, let's go. Alright, let's talk about the physiology of your respiratory system. When it comes to respiration, anong ginagawa nito? Pulmonary ventilation. Air must move into and out of the lungs so that gases in the air sacs are continuously refreshed and this process is commonly called breathing. What else? External respiration. Gas exchange between the pulmonary blood and alveoli must take place. Respiratory gas transport. We all know that oxygen and carbon dioxide must be transported 
transported to and from the lungs and tissue cells of the body via the bloodstream. Ano pang ginagawa niya? Internal respiration. At systematic capillaries, gas exchange must be made between the blood and tissue cells. Alright? Ito na tayo. Mechanics of breathing. Yes, mechanics of breathing. Ano ano ito? Okay, rule. Yes. When I talk about rule, respiratory system provides the volume changes lead to pressure changes which lead to the flow of gases to equalize pressure. Mm -hmm. Inspiration. Air is flowing into the lungs, chest, and expanded laterally. The rib cage is elevated and the diaphragm is depressed and flattened. Lungs are stretched to the larger thoracic volume causing the intrapulmonary pressure to fall and air to flow into the lungs. Expiration. Air is leaving the lungs. The chest is depressed and the lateral dimension is reduced. The rib cage is descended and the diaphragm is elevated and dome shaped. Lungs recoil to a smaller volume. Intrapulmonary pressure rises and air flows out of the lungs. When we say intrapulmonary volume, it is the volume within the lungs. It is the total volume of air within the lungs. Maalala mo to, may mga tidal volume, may mga ganun. Mamaya pag-aaralan natin yan. Now, intrapleural pressure. The normal pressure within the pleural space. The intrapleural pressure is always negative and this is the major factor preventing the collapse of the lungs. Be mindful, negative po ang pressure na nasa pleural space. Space, okay? Non-respiratory air movement. Non-respiratory air movements are result as are a result of reflex activity, but some may be produced voluntarily, such as cough, sneeze, crying, laughing, hiccups, and yawn. Alright, next na natin ang yung physiology of the respiratory system. And this time we're gonna the subtopic natin is respiratory volumes and capacities. Ito na yung sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina, mga tidal tidal volume. Ready ka na? Ito na, kalma, madali lang to. Yung tidal volume natin, naalala mo pa yan? The normal quiet breathing moves approximately 500 ml of air into and out of the lungs with each breath. Ano nga ba ang, ano nga ba ang total? Total lung volume natin, tidal volume natin, 500 ml. Okay? Inspiratory reserve volume, the amount, ano to? This is the amount of air that can be taken in forcibly over the tidal volume is the respiratory reserve volume, which is normally between 2,100 ml to 3,200 ml. Expiratory reserve Reserve volume, the amount of air that can be forcibly exhaled naman. After a tidal expiration, the expiration reserve volume is approximately how much? 1,200 ml. Ano naman yung residual volume? Now, even after the most strenuous expiration, about 1,200 ml of air still remains. Kaya nga residual, di ba? Remains in the lungs and it cannot be voluntarily expelled. Meaning, nandun lang talaga siya, residue, residual. And it is important because it allows gas exchange to go on continuously even between breaths and helps to keep the alveoli inflated. Vital capacity. The total amount of exchangeable air is typically around 4,800 ml in healthy young men. And this respiratory capacity is the vital capacity which is the sum of the tidal volume inspiration reserve volume and the expiratory reserve volume. Ano naman yung dead space volume? Much of the air that enters the respiratory tract remains in the conducting zone passageways and never reaches the alveoli. This is called the dead space volume and during a normal tidal breath, it amounts to about 150 ml. Functional volume. The functional volume, which is the air that actually reaches the respiratory zone and, and contributes to gas exchange is about how much? 350 ml. If you can see you guys, 350 ml lang talaga ang nakakatuloy, nakakapunta sa ating alveoli. And we call that functional volume. Ano naman yung spirometer? Respiratory capacities are measured with a spirometer. Wherein, as a person breathes, the volumes of air exhaled can be read on an indicator which shows the changes in air volume in inside the apparatus. Okay. Now, how about respiratory sounds? Okay, maganda to. Alright, so we have two respiratory sounds. You have your bronchial sounds. Ganito yung tunog niya.
Yes, o diba mas na-appreciate mo? Bronchial sounds are produced by air rushing through the large respiratory passageways. Yung ating trachea and atang iyong bronchi. Kaya mapapansin mo, ganun yung tunog niya, diba? Kasi meron tayong, yung air dumadaan sa large passageway ng ating respiratory tract. Ano naman yung vesicular breathing sounds? Now, vesicular breathing sounds occur as air fills the alveoli, and they are soft and resemble a muffled breeze. Now, here's an example of your vesicular breathing sounds. Ah, ba diba, bongga? Ayan, nakita mo yung difference, ba? Diba? Okay, laban. Ito na tayo. External respiration, gas transport, and internal respiration. Okay, let's talk about this. This is so exciting, you guys. So, external respiration. Mm, kala mo, isa lang yung respiration. No? Marami, tatlo kayang klase. Na kapag narinig mo yung concept ng external respiration, ano yung ibig sabihin nito? External respiration or pulmonary gas exchange involves the oxygen being loaded and carbon dioxide being unloaded from the the blood. Kita mo yung picture? So, O2 being loaded, carbon dioxide out from where? From the blood. Okay. Ano naman yung internal respiration? When we talk about internal respiration or systemic capillary gas exchange, this happens when oxygen is unloaded and carbon dioxide is loaded into the blood. So, kabalik taran yung external respiration ng internal malamang. So, ano nangyayari sa ating systemic capillary gas exchange? Ano nangyayari? Oxygen is unloaded and the carbon dioxide is loaded into the blood. Okay. Ano pa yung isa natin? Yung gas transport, oxygen transport cycle. Now, oxygen is transported in the blood in two ways. Most attaches to hemoglobin molecules inside the RBCs to form oxyhemoglobin. Ibig sabihin, oxygenated blood na ito. Or a very small amount of oxygen is carried dissolved in plasma while carbon dioxide is transported in plasma as bicarbonate ion or a small amount between 20 to 30 percent of the transported carbon dioxide this is carried inside the RBCs bound to hemoglobin okay dito na tayo sa control of respiration okay so dito tatalakayin natin yung mga factors kung ano yung nakaka-apekto sa ating paghinga. Actually, may dalawa tayong kategory doon. Yung tinatawag nating neural regulation, yung ating neural regulation, at ang iyong non-neural factors. Okay, simulan natin sa ating neural regulation. You have your phrenic and intercostal nerves. These two nerves regulate the activity of the respiratory muscles, the diaphragm, and the external intercostals. You have your medulla and pons. Neural centers to control respiratory rhythm and depth are located mainly in the medulla and pons. The medulla, which sets the basic rhythm of breathing, contains a pacemaker or a self-exciting respiratory center. And an expiratory center that inhibits the pacemaker is a rhythmic way. Ano naman ginagawa ng pons? Mga pons centers appear to smooth out the basic rhythm of inspiration and expiration set by the medulla. So, medulla oblongata tang iyong pons work hand in hand. Okay? Para ma-maintain yung ating rhythm. Eupnea. Alam mo to, o normal respiration. The normal respiratory rate is referral, referred to as eupnea. It is maintained at a rate of 12 to 15 respir respirations or cycles per minute. Sa ibang libro sinasabi nila 12 to si uh, 16 to 20, mga ganyan. Now, Hyperpnea. During exercise, we breathe more vigorously and deeply because of the brain centers send more impulses to the respiratory muscles. And this respiratory pattern is called hyperpnea. Diba naalala mo kapag nage-exercise tayo when you're running or doing um, extraneous activity, diba? We tend to breathe more. Why is that? Because our brain, uh, the medulla and pons are sending signals to the brain or to our body that we need more oxygen to perform well in our activity. 
So yun yun, hyperpnea. How about your non-neural factors influencing respiratory rate and depth? Ano ano to? Physical factors. Mm -hmm. Although the medullus respiratory centers set the basic rhythm and breathing, there is no question that physical factors such as talking, coughing, and exercising can modify both the rate and depth of breathing as well as an increased body temperature which is increases the rate of breathing. Ano pa? Volition or yung ating conscious control. Voluntary control of breathing is limited and respiratory centers will simply ignore messages from the cortex when the oxygen supply in the blood is getting low or blood pH is falling. Emotional factors. Now, this also modify the rate and depth of breathing through reflexes initiated by emotional stimuli acting through the centers in the hypothalamus. Remember, kapag agit ka, na-excite ka, kinakabahan ka, magpa-perform ka na, alam mo yun, nandun ka sa state ng verge of emotion, napapansin mo, bumibilis ang iyong paghinga. Unlike sa iyong kapag kalmado ka o kapag regular day lang, normal lang yung paghinga. Kaya, sinama natin ang emotional factors sa iyong non-neural factors. Ano pa? Chemical factors. The most important factors to modify respiratory rate and depth are chemical. The levels of carbon dioxide and oxygen in the blood. Increased levels of carbon dioxide Dioxide and decreased blood pH are the most important stimuli leading to an increase in the rate and depth of breathing, while a decrease in oxygen levels become important stimuli when the levels are dangerously low. So, tinatanong ka, ano ba yung nagsistimulate ng iyong respiration? Is it the carbon dioxide or is it your um, oxygen? It is actually your carbon dioxide. Low levels of carbon dioxide stimulates your respiration. Ano pa? Hypervent ventilation. Hyperventilation blows off more carbon dioxide and decreases the amount of carbonic acid, which returns blood pH to normal range when carbon dioxide or other sources of acids begin to accumulate in the blood. Hypoventilation. Hypoventilation or extremely slow or shallow breathing allows carbon dioxide to accumulate in the blood and brings blood pH back into the normal range when blood starts to become slightly alkaline. Alright you guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more nursing educational contents. I really, really appreciate all of your guys. I really, really do appreciate all of you guys. So thank you so much for supporting me. Yes, ipamalita mo na nga sa Radyong Sira, ang pinakabago at ang pinakalibre <laughs> review center sa YouTube. So guys, thank you so much. I'll see you again. Have a good one. Thank you so much, you guys, for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one. Help me grow my channel. Now you're ready here. Might as well subscribe. Hashtag Team Kulto. Give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends. Let me know what you guys think. Put them down in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to check out the other playlists I created for you. I'll be putting the links on the description box. You simply click this icon button right here. Let's connect. Follow me on all my other social media accounts. Everything is at Neil Gabby. I'll see you again.